With our masts stepped, we headed up the Oswego River. It was our first time entering Lux and we were feeling a little nervous. In order to enter the locks on the canal, you can radio the lock keeps on channel 13 and then wait for the green light to advance. Once in the locks, we attach to the slimy lines using gardening gloves. How are you guys doing? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you? Good. <laughs> we knew what they said. If we're doing something stupid, please let us know. Oh, first time through? Yeah. Yeah. There's a secret I'll tell you about when we get up. <laughs> it really is. Okay. Where are you headed to? Uh, the Caribbean. Really? So, yeah. The advice that the friendly lock keep gave us was to move forward when ascending in the locks. That way, there's less current on the boat. He also suggested that we ask for a tour at Lock 23 on the Erie Canal. We've arrived in Fulton. We just passed dock, no, lock three, which means we have three more locks left on the Oswego River and then we're on the Erie Canal. This is a funny thing to complain about, but it is silly hot right now. It's like the end of September, but we're over 30 degrees Celsius. Yeah, and then tomorrow, apparently high of 17. So be a nice little shock for us. We provisioned in Fulton and spent one night at the free docks. really sure what's going on here but there are like hundreds of seagulls <laughs> right by where we're docked and Greg's not awake yet but he probably will be very soon if these birds keep it up Turkey the adventure cat sniffing the outdoors <laughs> Because the canals were so flat and calm, the kitties got really comfortable wandering around while we were underway. The river was lined with everything from trailer parks to mansions, and lots and lots of flags. Okay, honey, where are we now? We are going eastbound on the Erie Canal. Where were we before? We were on the Oswego River. Heading down to Albany, the Hudson River. We took the advice of the lock keep and asked for a tour at Lock 23. If you try to protect it, but still. Turns color, kind of. Yeah. We figured this stuff's about 100 years old. Wow. And Whoa. It's beautiful. It is, yeah. yeah. It's a slate board. Uh, this is the, that's the holes that's open. This is a, the break. That's the break over there. That bar comes up. It's on, it's on the motor. The break is on the motor. It's one side. And this is, these are accelerators. These accelerators go through the grids here. Like a toaster almost, it doesn't get hot, but resistance. So that's where you see the gate goes, speeds up. That's all through the grid. Okay. And that's through the limit switch down here. This is an overcurrent. There's a spiking current. This adjusts here. The current goes through here. If it's too much, it'll spike up and trip it. Wow. Then originally... So it's like an old safety switch. Yeah, yeah. Ed was passionate about his work and gave us a generous tour. Lock 23 houses one of the few surviving DC Edison era generators in the world. Wow. Originally they made the power off of here. There was no grid back in. The old access to the was cold fairly early. There was no grid through here, so... So... It was water hydropower. 
Wow. Okay. So it's from the little hyperpower in the system. This is a little grease plug, you see the little pail. So this is a DC generator then? DC. Yeah. It was amazing exploring the creativity of old technology. So with the clothes, this timing, this is all fixed within here, how it tells you where they would be. That open close the valve, should the hydrogram open or close, that keeps it. It speeds, so that's this it's gotta maintain it. That's what I was saying. When it wants water, this is slowing down, so that it this is, opens up the valve and opens up the That's ingenious. Oh yeah. And then when it you know when it slows down, now when you get enough it's too fast and slow down it closes it. So that's how they keep it at the time you come. <laughs> yeah. There's like a little type of, not quite a cloth, like a oh, yeah. rag yes. type thing, and it holds the oil in there. Oh. And it lets it just drip out slowly. Most of the stuff back this time was was lost. It's not like you reused or filtered a lot of it, you just used it, it was gone. We stopped for the night just before Oneida Lake in Brewerton, New York. We're at the Brewers and Diner. We're on the search for Wi-Fi. Yes, and we're uploading a video. And the YouTube uploader is really awesome. We're crossing Oneida Lake right now, and it is super beautiful, but we're trying to escape this weather that's coming up behind us. Hopefully we can stay where it's sunny. This is lock 21 and it's our last upward lock. We are at the peak, highest point of the Erie Canal. We just passed the Filler River at Rome, which means we are going downstream. Uh, we're still at the peak at 420 feet above sea level. It's downstream all the way to the Hudson now. Yay. All the way to New York. our first downward lock and it's really weird. It's scary. <laughs> it's like feeling the ground go out from underneath you. <laughs> we are in Utica. I am installing the kitties GPS trackers today. Well installing as in putting a collar on them. So Greg, Greg just shut up. Shut up. Greg just set up <laughs> the paw track collars. I'm logging in to see where our kitties are right now. Jazz is wearing hers right now. Get rid of that. Oops. There you go. So you can see the black collar on her. Herky's not liking it so much. He's not really used to wearing a collar, so this is how he deals with it. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty excited. I just saw my first beaver in the wild. A little disappointed that I wasn't in Canada, but still pretty excited. Lucky Herky isn't up there. So we had put these water alarms uh, around our boat in the villages, and it's a good thing we did. 
So if we're not careful when we fill up our water tanks, some of the water can go into our aft cabin berth, which is exactly what happened. But our alarm went off, so I was able to catch it. And it's good to know that these work. The canal system can regulate the levels of the rivers using ominous looking floodgates. Our next stop was Little Falls, New York, home of the cleanest showers in the eastern part of the Erie Canal. Google had been no help finding propane along the canal, but a friendly gent at the marina took us to a lumber yard where we topped out our tanks. Afterwards, he took us for a quick driving tour of the city. We're at the Little Falls um, Rotary Park Marina, I think. Anyways, there's this really nice clubhouse. People are super nice. There's a binder here with all the restaurants and their menus. So I'm just flipping through. It was such a beautiful little town that we decided to spend an extra day here and biked around the city to get to know it better. This is Lock 17, the lock we will be descending tomorrow. It's the largest lock in the Erie Canal. Such a big drop that Diane is wearing a helmet just to keep safe. <laughs> We're downtown in uh, Little Falls. Gonna get some lunch and then check out some antiques in the place behind us. And maybe get some ice cream. We deserve ice cream. Penny, where are we? Um, I don't remember. I got my ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> On returning to Cataway, we discovered our new docking neighbour was the Grand Erie, the flagship of the Canal Corps. It was a beautiful boat. One of the deckhands who we had run into in Fulton was kind enough to give us a tour. The Grand Erie is a towboat used for dredging on the Erie Canal. She's powered by two 575 horsepower engines. We're hanging out in the club house in Little Falls, watching Star Trek, mm -hmm. having a bit of a movie night, and deciding on what type of popcorn we want. <laughs> There's three flavors. There's too much decisions. Yeah, it's a first world problem. <laughs> We're currently in New York City. Thank you to everyone who has commented about fixing our audio. We are working on it. If there's anything else that you think we can improve on in our sailing or vlogging, please leave us a comment below. Thanks for watching.